So guys, today I'm bringing you the very first tutorial of GameHub Emulator 5.2.2. In this video, I'll take you from start to finish and show you exactly how to run GTA 5 Lite, a fully optimized 38GB version, right on your mobile device. Not just that, I'll also cover how to fix every major issue, complete missions without actually playing them, and make the game run smoothly even on MediaTek, Mali, or any other mobile processor. Now look at the gameplay on your screen. This version of the game is almost 3 times smaller than the original, which is around 110 gigabytes. Storing that on a mobile device is nearly impossible, but this 38 gigabytes light build fits perfectly without any problem. When it comes to missions, everything from the original game is included, and even a few extras. The graphics are impressive too, maintaining the original feel while being optimized for low space. As you can see, the gameplay runs flawlessly, not a single frame drop or stutter. So enough talk, let's get started with the full setup. Let's go! Alright guys, first of all, you need to install the GameHub emulator. Simply search GameHub emulator on Google and download it directly from the official website. Once the installation is complete, open the emulator. It'll ask you to log in with your Google account. This step is important because it helps save your game settings and progress to the cloud. After logging in, the emulator will request a few basic permissions, just allow them, and your setup will be ready. Next, go to the Import PC Games section and add your game here. Since this is the latest updated version of the emulator, the Auto Driver download feature has been removed. But don't worry, the emulator will automatically suggest the most suitable driver based on your device's configuration. You can either install it manually through Custom Install or let it auto-install when you launch the game. Now, because we're running GTA 5 Lite, there are a few special settings required for maximum performance and smooth gameplay. Let's move on to that part. So once you've added the game, head over to the general settings section. Here, you can adjust the resolution based on your device's performance. For most low-end or mid-range devices, I recommend setting it to 960 by 544 as it delivers smooth performance without compromising too much on visuals. If you want widescreen support like the one you're seeing in my gameplay, switch the resolution to 960 by 430 it gives a wider field of view and still runs efficiently. After that, leave all the other options below on their default settings, no need to change anything there. Now move to the compatibility mode section. Inside compatibility layer, select Proton 10.0 ARM 64X2, this version is fully compatible with MediaTek, Mali, and Snapdragon processors. Once that's selected, your setup will be optimized for the best possible stability and performance across all devices. Next, go to the Translation Perms section. Here, make sure to select Extreme Mode, this setting pushes the emulator to deliver the highest possible performance. Then, enable the Multi-Thread option. This is crucial for Snapdragon users, especially for HN series and other high-end Snapdragon chips as it allows the emulator to use multiple CPU cores efficiently, resulting in much smoother gameplay. If you're using a Mali or MediaTek device, you should instead switch to performance mode or game preset mode. These settings are tested and verified by many of my MediaTek subscribers who run GTA 5 Lite flawlessly using the exact same configuration. Now, moving on to the GPU driver section, this part is extremely important. The GPU driver is what powers your graphics output, and selecting the right one directly affects your game's visuals and stability. So make sure to choose carefully based on your device type before proceeding further. For example, if you're using a MediaTek or Mali-based device, or even a Snapdragon 8 Elite or the latest Snapdragon Gen series, you need to select System GPU here. This option ensures maximum stability and compatibility across these chipsets. For Snapdragon 8 Elite users specifically, there's also a special driver available, but as of now, the system GPU driver remains the most stable and reliable choice. Now, if you're using devices like Snapdragon 680, 695, 720G, 778G, or any of the Snapdragon 800 series including HN1, HN2, and HN3, these processes can handle GTA 5 Lite with near-native performance. For these, you should select the latest Turnip driver version. This driver offers optimized GPU performance and enhanced frame stability, especially on mid to high-end Snapdragon chips. It's also supported on several Poco series devices, ensuring you get smooth gameplay with no frame drops or graphical glitches. After that, scroll down to the DXVK settings section. Since we're running GTA 5 Lite, will need a driver that delivers the best possible stability and frame consistency. Here, you can choose between DXVK 2.3.1, 2.4.1, or the most optimized version currently, DXVK 2.7.1.1. The choice depends on your device's hardware support. For Snapdragon 8 Elite and other higher-end Snapdragon processors, DXVK 2.3.1 or 2.4.1 tends to be the most stable and reliable. On the other hand, Mali and MediaTek devices perform better with DXVK 1.10.3, 1.11.1, 
or the Molly Fix version, though in some cases, even 2.3.1 works perfectly fine. Once you've selected your suitable DXVK version, leave all the remaining settings at their default values. When you launch the game, the emulator will automatically update and apply the required driver patches in the background. Since this version of the game is almost three times smaller, around 38 gigabytes compared to the 110 gigabytes original, there's one important thing you need to understand. Because of its reduced size, the game relies heavily on shader compilation to render visual smoothly. This means that when you first launch the game, it may take a little extra time to compile shaders in the background. On some devices, especially those with limited multi-threading capability, this shader processing can cause temporary FPS drops or even minor crashes during the first few runs. But don't worry, this is completely normal. Once the game has compiled and cast all the required shaders, it won't need to redo that process. The next time you run GTA 5 Lite, it will perform much more smoothly with noticeably higher FPS and improved stability since all the shaders are already saved on your device. So the more you play, the better the game will run. Run the game, enjoy the gameplay, and if this tutorial helped you, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss upcoming performance guides and cool gaming tutorials. Now guys, let's talk about how you can skip missions in GTA 5 Lite. There are two simple ways to do this. The first method follows the game's default rule. If you fail a mission three times in a row, the game automatically offers you the option to skip that mission or cutscene. This is the easiest way if you just want to move ahead quickly without making any manual changes. The second method is for those who want full open world access right from the start. For that, you'll need to use a pre-completed save file. It's a very simple process. Just open the game directory and go to the documents folder. Inside it, locate the game save folder. Now, place the completed save file that I'm showing you under the extra section directly into that location. Make sure to copy it into all two or three subfolders as shown. This ensures that the emulator detects and loads the progress correctly without any errors. Once done, restart the emulator, and your game will load with all missions unlocked and the entire open world area accessible. That's it, your GTA 5 like will now open directly in free roam mode, ready to explore without restrictions.